Welcome back to the Soar Hire Podcast, a show for leaders by leaders that's focused on providing business and career advice, tools, and resources that help people achieve higher levels of success. What a great show we have for you today. Welcome back. We're excited to be with you. We've got one of my favorite hosts, uh, a podcast host and, 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 and gurus of the business back on the show today, Rob Johnson. Rob, welcome back to the show. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. It's fitting that we have you back on the show towards the end of the year here in 2022. This is a this is the time of year where the holidays kind of slow things down. We enjoy heaping helping piles of food and pie and cake and turkey. We we enjoy hanging around watching all the Christmas shows and snuggled up by the fireplace with our kids and our family members. It's also a time of year of reflection where we yeah. sit back and we we just reflect on this year and all the things we're thankful for, all the positive things that happened and maybe even about, you know, some of the things that didn't go so well for us that we didn't necessarily plan for. Mm. And we're we're also reflecting on what we want the future to look like. What's 2023 look like? How, what are, where are we going as a family? Where are we going in our careers? Where are we going in our business? What do we want that to look like? What are our opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. And in all of that, where we come into the holiday season, most people are kind of tired. They, they're worn out for a, a four quarters of, of blocking and tackling and, and living the hard life. And we enjoy the downtime of the holidays. But as we look forward, most people, if you're like me, you need some motivation to get through the holidays, rest and recover, and then the fateful turn of the calendar, right? The the day the ball drops and Ryan Seacrest, you know, welcomes everybody into the new year and we're all celebrating and drinking champagne and kissing and hugging the next day we've got to get up get motivated and get going because it's a whole new year so i'm excited to be talking about this with you today rob yeah i'm excited as well because it's it's one of these topics where it's people get people get very general on it because that's the easy way to do it. And if you're speaking in generalities, when it comes to motivation, you're doing it wrong. Well, you're absolutely right. One thing that I've learned in life, Rob, and and I want to get your opinion on this too, is anytime there's vagueness involved, it's not going to go well. Right. If it's, if it's vague, it's not going to go well. It doesn't matter if you're talking about a, a strategic plan, a goal, going to the gym, uh, doing stuff with your kids. You got to show up and you got to be all in. It can't be willy-nilly. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, it's been said that uh, the devil is in the details, and that's that's certainly the case with a lot of the philosophies that have, have been espoused when it comes to motivation is that you really do need to look at you know the fine print of what some of these people are espousing because if you look if you look much deeper than you know a foot or two, you'll quickly see that there is nothing there. and that's that's one of my larger frustrations when it comes to motivation is because people people want to talk about, these very good feel good sentiments like you know you shouldn't hate mondays you know mondays don't suck you need to take the week by the horns like all this stuff that's like yeah it sounds great but then the people are left with the question of how do you do it you can tell people what to do right you can tell someone that's incredibly unhealthy to hey hey you live a healthier lifestyle that doesn't help them because you're not telling them why you're not you're not giving them any roadmap to execute against and that's ultimately what you want to do when you're motivating people. You want to give them a short, tangible mile markers to hit, feel good about, that keep them motivated, and then keep them moving down the road. And what a lot of motivational experts will do is they'll come in and, and they'll they'll speak in generalities and get people pumped up. And they feel good for an hour, maybe a day. But then you need more motivation. You need to refill that tank. And if it's always in that general, generic direction – no one is going to have 
any long-term sustainability within that motivational philosophy. So what I always tell people is that you need to pick something that is unchanging to focus on. And for me, it's my family. Like the reason I can stay so motivated, the reason I can work 20 hours and sleep four and do that on the loop for several days in a row is because I'm extremely motivated for my family, for them to have success, for them to be in a good position to take care of them. And the reason it's my family and not myself is because I am ever changing. My mood goes from high to low to depressed to overjoyed. Like I, I am a very changing person. Hmm. So if my motivation is staked on my emotions, I am going to be quickly bankrupt when I hit a low. Whereas if my motivation and my source of that is focused on my family, they are never changing. They are always there. That is a significant difference between myself uh, being the sole point of focus for motivation and something external. Yeah. Man, that's pretty powerful. I love it. Interesting thing, interesting question is, well, where do you get motivation from? You know, some of the things that I see out there in the world, you know, in the, in the world we live in, there's TikTok, YouTube, yeah. Uh, you know, t TV shows, um, you know, people subscribe to, you know, quote unquote, motivational speakers and, and theorists and, and, you know, sometimes even coaches out there, there's, there's quote unquote, motivational coaches out there. Um, yeah. where are people getting their motivation from matters? If you're feeling bad, or you're wanting to do something different in life, there's nothing wrong with going on YouTube and, and looking up some motivational videos and listening to some of that stuff, but it can't Absolutely. be the factor. It can't be the thing that really truly motivates you. It's like, you know, I remember when I was, uh, you know, in the, in the military and we would be training for missions and things like that. We get really super pumped up. We go into the, into the gym and, and do strength and conditioning. And we turn on, you know, eye of the tiger and all kind of like real pumped up high energy ACDC tunes and, you know, rock and roll stuff. That's just hardcore kick, butt, take name kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Rocky Balboa music kind of stuff and we crank it up and we get in there and we take our shirts off and we lift weights and grunt and groan and, and all of that. And, and it was great. It was fun, but it was temporary. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people fall victim is they have, Oh man, I feel like doing this today. And they go out there and they, 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 they listen to music, they get pumped up. It's temporary. Whereas you're talking about more of a longer term focus on yeah. how to stay motivated. So how do you stay motivated when you're in the grind, when, when things get hard? Yeah, it's a good question. The, uh, there's, there's two main things that I'd point to one. The first thing I talked about was you have to have something that you can, um, set your focus on that is outside of your own emotional range. And for me, again, that's my family. I can focus on them because they don't change. Like I change, you know, my emotions go up and down. The second thing is you have to have some type of motivational philosophy that you follow. And this is where it takes time. So when you were saying, you know, who do you follow or who, how do you find really good motivation? It, it takes time. It's like anything else. It's a discipline that you have to develop. And for me, one of the most effective general motivational strategies that I've heard is Jocko Willink's good philosophy. Hmm. And basically, this philosophy is anytime that something happens to you, specifically bad things, you have to say good. And as long as you can say good, that means you're still alive. You still have some breath to fix the situation. You still have some time to learn and overcome and adapt. And while no philosophy is perfect, right? You could say, well, what about the worst situation imaginable? That's not really the point. The point is that when you get kicked and when you fall down, are you going to lay there and cry about it? Or are you going to say, you know what? That's an education. Good. 
I'm moving forward. So you need to have some type of, and I always tell my team this, you have to have um, these areas where you are not going to retreat on. And when you figure out where those boundaries are, where you're never going to retreat into something, it puts you in a much stronger position mentally to handle problems. So for me, I am never going to retreat in conflict. That's a that's something for me. If I face conflict, I know I'm going to address it. I'm not going to back down. Even if I'm wrong, I'm going to explain to that person why I was wrong. I'm never just going to tuck tail and walk away. Um, so, so you have to have these areas where you're not willing to retreat and you have to have some type of motivational philosophy that drives you. And for me, because I've, I've, I've been through the extreme ownership, I'm in Jocko's Leadership Academy. I do a lot of stuff along that philosophy it resonates really well with me and it's, and I've seen it effective for me. That doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody, but that good philosophy is one thing that I really enjoy and, and use to this day. So you have to have something that is preset that you're comfortable with that you can execute on. And that's how you develop consistent motivation, even when no one else is around. And that's critical because no one is, you know, Jason is a business owner. No one is around that can understand what you're going through in those 1 a.m. times, right? You don't have a gaggle of people there. And that's why social media to me is largely useless when it comes to motivation as far as a long-term strategy. Because of that, you don't have that community that's built there that can be there when you're in your car and you get the call that a client's walking or that you lost a business deal or that someone's pulling out or, you know, you need to have these philosophies ingrained in your mind that you can retreat to when bad things happen. And they will. Absolutely. Bad things it, will it's, happen. It's going to rain. It is. And it usually at the worst times it rains cats and dogs, right? Yeah. Motivation is a mindset. So one, th one thing that, that people need to be thinking about is, you know, what do I need to be motivated about? Why am I motivated? Why do I need to be motivated? And yeah. are you just motivated about one thing? Oh, I'm motivated to, you know, drive to work very fast because I love work. I'm motivated to <laughs> do what my wife tells me so I don't sleep on the couch tonight. I'm motivated, yeah. you know, there, there's, there's a lot of things uh, to be motivated about. But I think the key question is, why do you need to be motivated and what are the priorities that you, that need to, to your motivation needs to be prioritized around. Mm. Right. Yeah. And so I would encourage people when it comes to motivation, figure out these, these most important things in your life. We, we have something that we use in the coaching business uh, or at least in my business called the diamond mapping and it allows you to like visually map out your life. Right. So I would, I would advise people from a motivation standpoint to anchor that people that get unmotivated all the time, don't have it anchored in where any Absolutely. little thing happens. It, 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 it takes them off track. Right. So think about yourself and your family what motivates you about your family? What do you need to be motivated about in the family, right? You want to be motivated to provide safety and security for you, your wife, and your kids. You want to be yeah. motivated to be a good neighbor, mow your grass, keep your house up, up to date, and, and help people in need, right? Because you want to you wanna be a good neighbor. You want to be motivated to be a good example for your kids. You want to be motivated to be a good example at work. You want to be motivated to do something that's going to make a difference in the world, not just go to work and, and, and check in and check out it from nine to five, right? You want to be yeah. motivated to take care of yourself from a health perspective so that you can live a better quality life and not live your life in a hospital being, you know, treated all the time where you can actually be free and enjoy the wonders of this great country. Right. So find 
those types of things that's important to you, figure out, yeah. are you motivated around those things and what needs to happen for you to get motivated around it, where you can build motivational muscle memory, where that's part of your life, not just something you do and you feel bad one day. Yeah, those are all great points. And unfortunately, I feel like as we head into this next year, that motivation for a lot of people is somewhat you know, becoming a curse word. They're tired of hearing it or they don't really know the proper application for it. And what I've always encouraged people is if you replace the word motivation with drive, so you say, what motivates you? Well, what drives you? What, what makes you want to put the car in a higher gear and stay there? And that's, to me, a really effective way of looking at motivation is what drives you. Well, if money drives you, um, it's going to drive you in a lot of different directions because anyone can go and make money, right? Like you and me over the course of our careers, and you've, you've been in the game longer, but I'm sure you've had several opportunities that have come up that you could have jumped to and made more money, or you could have made similar money doing something different, right? That, that's not a great driver because if money is the sole thing that you're focused on, you're always going to be pulled in multiple directions. Whereas for me, what drives me is people building a meaningful team that has staying power outside of me. That's what drives me is creating an environment that I don't have to be the focus on in order for it to be effective. And to me, that's a really meaningful motivator for me. Another way to look at this as well, to keep things kind of simple in people's minds is motivation and drive. I like how you interchange those two words um, very well, because I think people will really connect with that. It makes sense to them. But I'm yeah. all about simplicity. Yeah. If you break motivation and drive down to two simple things, it's, it's two things. It's extrinsic is external. Those are things that you do to get something in return, right? So I'm going to go to work and I'm going to work really hard and I'm going to sell a lot of products and services and yeah. I'm doing it because I'm incentivized by the commission and the bonuses I make off of that. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm, I'm motivated to treat my spouse a certain way because they're going to treat me a certain way back. And I like how that works. They're, yeah. they're, it's, it's all about kind of the, the rewards, the, the bonuses. It's also about avoiding things we fear. People do things, you know, they, they drive very carefully in the rain because they're scared that if they don't drive very carefully and it rains, that they can increase their chances of getting in a wreck in the middle of a, of a storm, right? Nobody wants that. So that can be fear-based or consequence-based or incentive-based. The intrinsic uh, aspect of it, the second aspect is internal, which I think is more important. I think is where you're driving this, if I'm, if I'm reading you right. Those are the internal things. These are the things that are passions, things that you care deeply about. These are the things that interest you, that's based off of values and morals and principles that, that are grounded, that, yeah. that ground you as a person, as a human, as a contributing, you know, member of society, know the difference between the two. And so when you, when you are trying to find motivation that you know, the difference, you can do both. You should do both because we different things, um, require different types and levels of motivation, but yeah. don't chase the temporary quick fix. I feel good today. You know, if I, I, I feel I'm dreading going to work. So I'm going to put on, you know, some, some crazy feel good music to pump myself up. So I feel good for five minutes when I walk in the door and then 15 minutes later that, that, is that energy is sucked out of me. What you need to be thinking is how do I need to motivate myself to maybe find the right place to be in the first place? So I never get demotivated in going to work. Yeah. 
that, that's a great point. And that's where most people, it's almost like uh, you put a band aid over this gaping wound that you have. Mm. And instead of saying, well, why am I bleeding? You're just like, well, I'm just going to put a band aid over it. You're not asking, why are you not motivated when you're going to work? Why don't you want to go there? Why do you hate it there? Instead, it's just easier to say, I'm going to listen to Thunderstruck on the way in. And that's my walk up <laughs> song, you know, and, and that's what I'm going to do. But you, you just don't ask why because you're afraid to go there. And that's it's okay. But you just need to acknowledge it. You need to acknowledge right. that that's something that's a barrier for you. And, and don't just cover it up. Like, ask the hard questions, it'll help. Yeah, it's it's it, it's really fun and exciting to think about yourself as as a wrestler in the WWE that that <laughs> shows up on the scene with theme music and pyrotechnics, but yeah. for most people that's not not realistic. And if you need all that flash and bang, then there's yeah. probably something going on behind the scenes that you you need to be thinking about differently. Uh, and so, <laughs> go ahead, Rob. Oh, I was just laughing. I was going to say my, my, my people hate loading the pyrotechnics before I walk in every day. They hate it, but I make them do it. It's good for them in the long run. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you feel like you, you have to text them from the other end of the, uh, of the parking lot. Hey, I'm here. Get, get it all. Get the show ready. I'm walking in the door and boom. Yeah, here's cue the, cue the music. music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like WWE or, you know, like you go to some big fancy conference and the guest speaker is walking up on stage after the intro and there's music and it's you know the 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 speakers are rattling the seats and you're getting oh my gosh man this guy must be awesome and all this all this music's pumping me up and then half the time the speaker <laughs> stinks anyway right so the song was way cooler <laughs> you're like yeah can we listen to the music a little longer uh, I'm, I'm starting to go get get yeah. uh, bored here <laughs> <clears throat> but that's that's a good analogy for how people live their lives and how they think. You know, they they absolutely they, there's there's a lot of um, things people will do that are kind of instant gratification stuff, and so we're trying to avoid that. It 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 it's like you, Rob said, it's it's a band aid. It's it's you're you're going to stop the bleeding for a minute, but at the end of the day, you know, the fact that that your artery has been severed from you know, you walking into a bus stall at work isn't going to solve the problem. It's just going to um, allow you to not pass out from blood loss, you know, sooner than later, right? So Absolutely. folks, when you're thinking about the holidays and when you're thinking about the new year and, and getting pumped up and getting excited about the new year and turning over new leaf, dropping old bad habits, starting new, better, you know, faster, bigger, better habits of, of, of the future. That's all good and well, but go to the why, go to the things that can anchor you in this and ground you in this and, and surround yourself, not with just, you know, funny TikToks and YouTube videos that pump you up full of, you know, famous people that, that give hoorah cheerleader speeches, go deeper than that. Connect with, with, with people and surround yourself with people that, that are genuine and sincere that can really truly motivate you, can tap into the heart and the soul of what makes you tick, what really drives you, as Rob says, that, that, really pushes you to want to do something bigger, something better, be a better father, be a better mother, be a better boss, be a better whatever. Yeah. Dig deep into that and you will find longer lasting success. Don't pin your hopes on somebody on how many likes somebody gives you on social media that you posted like a motivational uh, quote off the internet. That's great. That's that there's nothing wrong with that. That can be a part of the equation, but do it the right way. It will work a lot more effectively for you. And so folks, yeah. we hope you have a wonderful, wonderful 2023. We want you to start off the year with a bang with, with big and bold goals that will stretch you, that will challenge you, that will drive you 
to the next level of success in your personal and professional lives. That's what we're here for. That's why we created this podcast is for you to soar higher, for you to have access to leaders and and people that have been there and done that and learned these lessons, tools, resources, all of these things to help you be successful. If you have any any other thoughts, questions, or concerns, reach out to the podcast via the show notes. We have uh, emails and different things that 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 are resources for you to connect and ask questions and follow up. You can also connect to SoarHireCoaching.com where you can, uh, you know, ping us for for the things that you you're thinking about and concerned about. We can help give you some advice and stuff there as well. You can do it. We want you to do it. You can do it. You will do it. Just do it the right way to where it's lasting, where you can make a lasting effect and impact, where you can truly make the world a better place and not just feel good for 10 minutes as you kick off the new year. That's it for today. We look forward to seeing you next time.